Hello everyone, it's David from Automy Press. I'm going to talk about something that all of you guys have been waiting for, which is a next generation Toyota 4Runner. What's going on with that model? What is happening with the sixth generation? Well, that is something that I want to speculate and predict again, because as you know, I love doing that. Now, everything I'm going to share with you is based on my own prediction and my own speculation. It's not anything official from Toyota, but I still love to talk about it. So let me go over everything from the engine, to the styling, to the design, all that stuff that you've been waiting for, because I know that many of you guys love the 4Runner and you want to know more about what's going on with the next generation 4Runner. So let's get into details by using my Lexus GX as a baseline because as you know, they share the platform with the existing 4Runner and therefore it will be kind of appropriate to go around my GX and talk about the 4Runner within that context. Let's go. Welcome back. So let's talk about the sixth generation Toyota 4Runner because it's something that we all love to talk about. And I'm going to use my Lexus GX as baseline here and we can therefore talk about everything from engine to the interior to the exterior design and whether or not the new generation 4Runner will indeed show up sometime next year. So first and foremost, the timing. We don't know exactly when Toyota intend to introduce the next gen 4Runner. My best guess is still the same as what I predicted several months ago, which is that the next gen 4Runner will show up sometime mid to end of 2024 calendar year as a 2025 model year. When I talked about this several months ago, some of you guys were doubting or questioning my timing, but I'm still going to stick with that story based on my own prediction. So don't expect to be able to even see a teaser photo or teaser image on the new 4Runner until perhaps early summer or mid-summer next year, and therefore it's still many months away. And that kind of makes sense because as you can imagine, Toyota would want to space apart introduction of a significant models. And we've had so many new models from Toyota and more to come. So it kind of makes sense that the foreigner has been pushed out a little bit into either mid 2024 or end of 2024. So there's a chance for all these new models to debut without conflicting with each other. So that's the timing I think. So we have a fair amount of time to not just sort this out, but to give you a chance to maybe buy the current gen foreigner if that's what you want to do. But I'm pretty sure that you will be 2025 model year for the new gen foreigner. Now let's talk about the styling. That's something that has been very difficult to predict because there has been no sighting of the 4Runner on the street anywhere. Because usually by now you think there will be some kind of camouflage models running around. But because the 4Runner is being built in Japan, at least for the current generation, and because it's still very far away, there has been no sighting of a prototype. And therefore we all really have to think hard to figure out what the design might be. But I have a pretty good feel for what it might be based on the fact that the 2024 Tacoma has been introduced and we know that the Tacoma will share much of its components with the 4Runner and that makes sense from an engineering perspective and also possibly from a manufacturing perspective. Now by saying that, am I implying that the 4Runner might be transferred to Mexican factory where the Tacoma is built away from Japan? It's possible only because they will share the same platform but at the same time the factories in Mexico, there's two of them, are tapped out and they're fully maxed out for the Tacoma production. So there might not be any room to squeeze in another 150,000 units of the 4Runner to the Mexican factory. So I'm still going to stick with the fact that the 4Runner will stay in Japan to be built at the Tahara factory. But let's get back into talking about the design of the new 4Runner. So even though maybe the 4Runner will continue to be built in Japan, while the Tacoma will be built in Mexico as usual, I still think they will share many of the design elements. So that means the front grille, which will be very different from this Lexus GX obviously, uh, will be similar between the Tacoma and the 4Runner. I would assume that the 4Runner grille will be a little bit bigger and a little bit bold and more aggressive, simply because I was surprised by how tame looking the 2024 Tacoma grille is. And I can only imagine that for the 4Runner to make a bit of a splash, the grille will be bigger and more aggressive and will have a little bit more of an in your face stance, I think anyway. But otherwise, I can only assume that the grille will be similar to the Tacoma, just different size and maybe different uh, mesh inside the grille. I would think that the maybe headlights will be similar between the Tacoma and the 4Runner, mainly because there's only so much you can do with headlights. And also, if you make the headlights very different, it costs substantially more to engineer and design. But if you make them similar, especially the inside part of the headlight, it cuts costs and saves time for product development. So maybe the headlight will be similar between Tacoma and 4Runner, but the grille could be bigger and bolder in design. There's a pretty good chance that the new 4Runner will go after the Ford Bronco and the Jeep Wrangler crowd. And therefore, I will also assume that the whole front end will look a little bit more rugged. Something that I have been predicting 
for many, many months, and I'm still going to stick with that story. Coming back to the side of the Forerunner, as you can imagine, this is the current Gen GX, so it's a little bit different from whatever the new Forerunner might look like. But one of the key elements of the design for the Forerunner is the big uh, C pillar here. As you know, that this goes all the way to the top with a big section that takes up a space in the current Gen Forerunner. And that is such a signature part of the Forerunner that I think they will keep that design and the C pillar will remain to be the prominent part of the design. But the rest of the body here will be thinner and less obvious. So uh, the D pillar will be thin, maybe even blacked out, but there will be prominent C pillar. And that's what I'm assuming or that's what I'm speculating for now. What about the rest of the design? Well, much like Tacoma, there will be much more of aggressive stance in terms of side profile. So I can only imagine that front fender and the rear fender will stick out with a big uh, cladding above the wheel wells here so that it will have much more of a stance. Again, kind of following the uh, design theme of Ford Bronco, which has a really big wheel well sticking out. Not sure if they will go as aggressive as a Ford Bronco or Jeep uh, Wrangler, but I think it will move quite a bit more toward that direction compared to the existing Forerunner which has a pretty conservative and tame design. So you can imagine that these fenders will come out, will have big wheel wells with a big plastic cladding, and to give that stance and aggressive feel that the current Forerunner is lacking, and uh, therefore the transformation will be pretty, pretty major and bold in design. And then we'll come into the rear of it. Well, that's gonna be interesting because the Forerunner has a small vertical tail lamps, as you know, a little bit like the GX here, but even smaller than this one. But all of the new um, Toyota models have been using a new side profile, much like what you see in, let's say, a Grand Highlander, and comes toward this way with a horizontal tail lamps. But I think the Forerunner will keep the vertical, smaller tail lights once again to keep that signature look and feel of the Forerunner, so that it's distinct from all the other models that Toyota now has. And so you can imagine the smaller tail lamps which also, by the way, is a little bit of what's happening with a new Land Cruiser, because in my head, I'm thinking that maybe Land Cruiser was actually supposed to be the new Gen 4Runner. At some point, Toyota switched the strategy and decided to bring the Land Cruiser name back, and that required Toyota to re-strategize the 4Runner in terms of design and overall feel. So it's gonna be quite interesting to think through all that speculation, uh, but I think the design will be somewhat mimicking the Land Cruiser, because once again, maybe the Land Cruiser was supposed to be the Forerunner. So I don't think there'll be a horizontal tail lamps in the back. I'm almost certain that the new Forerunner will not have uh, a horizontal swing tailgate, much like what we see in GX. It'll be the standard tailgate design, which means you open this way. And whether there will be a window that will roll down or whether it will be pop up like this one, it's a bit hard to say. I have been predicting that Toyota will eliminate the roll down window in the back but I know there has been lots of backlash from viewers like yourself and everyone who said that is a critical part of the Forerunner design. So I'm hoping, finger crossed, that they decide to keep it and allow the new Forerunner to have the roll down window, which will differentiate that from Land Cruiser, which as you know, have a pop-up window as well. So those are some interesting things to think about. Now going back to the side profile here for a moment because I forgot to talk about the tires and wheels. As you know, the current Forerunner has a very conservative very outdated design for wheels and quite a conservative um, tires as well, unless you go for a TRD Pro. So I think the whole um, side profile with aggressive stance will also have to go hand in hand with a much more aggressive wheel design and availability of larger tires. So I think that will kind of follow what's happening with the Tacoma, both in terms of the wheel redesign, but also being able to offer a much larger tires and wheel combination which is what we're seeing in Tacoma. So does that mean that there could be a Trail Hunter version of the Forerunner? I think so. I think the Forerunner and the Tacoma will mirror each other in terms of the type of models it's going to show up. And that means the very flagship model will be the Trail Hunter Forerunner, followed by TRD Pro, followed by TRD Off-Road or TRD Sport. And then also there will be a luxury version, which will be limited. And perhaps a limited might be called platinum at some point because they like to use the word platinum, which was never used in the Forerunner lineup, but perhaps they will use it in the new sixth generation. But those are some of the design predictions I have. What about the engine and the powertrain? Let's talk about that next. So I just opened the hood on my GX, and of course we have a beautiful and a lovely V8 engine in my GX460 
one of the reasons why I'm going to really hesitate to sell this one even though I really want the new 2024 GX. So that's something I have to decide later on. But for now, let's come back to discussing the powertrain for the 4Runner, which is pretty easy to predict because I'm very sure they will follow the footsteps of the Tacoma, which means that the new 4Runner will have the 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine as a base model and 2.4 liter with a hybrid system as a flagship engine for probably the Trail Hunter and the TRD Pro. Those are some very predictable things that should happen with the 4Runner. We could all be surprised and maybe the 4Runner will only offer hybrid as it is the case with the Land Cruiser, but that wouldn't make sense because they need some kind of differentiation between the Land Cruiser and the 4Runner. And as you know, Land Cruiser's price have been lowered already. So it's ever so close to the 4Runner and you know what, they need some kind of distinction and differentiation between those two models. So I'm going to assume for now that it will be 2.4 turbo and 2.4 turbo with hybrid. And much like in Tacoma, the actual electric motor will be sandwiched between the engine and the transmission. So it will function very differently from a typical hybrid system that Toyota has, which has engine and the motor working together in a parallel based system. But in the case of the 4Runner, following the same recipe as a Tacoma, the electric motor will act to supplement the actual engine and therefore you'll feel quite different in terms of the drivability, in terms of how the vehicle might accelerate and so forth. So those are some interesting facts and speculations that we will continue to talk about for many months to come. Now will there be some surprises like a plug-in hybrid or maybe even a fully electric version of the 4Runner? I don't think so, not in the beginning anyway, so definitely not in 2024 or 2025. But as we get into 2026 or 2027 model year, Toyota and also Lexus are talking about converting many of its models to fully electric versions. So there should be some kind of a fully electric either truck or SUV following the footsteps of Tacoma or the 4Runner. So maybe the names might change, but I suspect there will be a full electric versions of something that's similar to those two models at some point three to five years down the road. But I don't think the 4Runner itself will become fully electric. And of course, if we do end up with a plug-in hybrid version of 4Runner, that would be super ideal. But we don't even have a plug-in hybrid version of the Grand Highlander, so highly unlikely they will offer that in the next-gen 4Runner for at least many years to come. So that's the engine and the powertrain. I know you guys might not be crazy about moving from the proven and reliable 4-liter V6 engine to the 2.4 turbo with or without hybrid. But you know what, this is the way Toyota world is moving and this is the way it's going to be. And I'm almost certain that we will not see a V6 engine in the 4Runner. And therefore, if you want that engine, you want more of a traditional feel, you might want to buy it for 2024 calendar year before it's too late, because once it's gone, it's going to be gone for good. Uh, now, I did talk about and ask about why Toyota is so aggressively moving from V8 to V6, from V6 to Turbo 4. And the response has been pretty simple. It's not just for fuel efficiency, or emission standard, but it's a corporate strategy to downsize the engine and to have less carbon footprint and to move towards smaller engine and smaller powertrain. So that's something that Toyota decided to do corporately and nothing is going to change it, especially knowing that three to five years down the road, many vehicles are being converted to fully electric anyways. So those are things I can talk about in terms of engine. I think suspension will be quite different from the current 4Runner, but will definitely follow the footsteps of the Tacoma as well. But the rear suspension will be different because one is a truck and one is a SUV. Even though Tacoma has moved to a, a full coil spring design in some of these models, including TRD Pro and Trail Hunter, I think the 4Runner design will be different because in the Tacoma, obviously we have a pickup bed in the back, which is very light versus the 4Runner, which will have a full rear seating area with a lot more weight and therefore suspension has to be designed differently and calibrated differently. And those are obviously some stuff we just don't know yet. Now let's talk about the interior predictions for the 4Runner. Well, that's also going to be very predictable based on the transformation that we saw for the new Tacoma, which means at least in terms of upper models and the flagship models, we should have a full digital cluster, which is 12.3 inches. And for the infotainment system, we can expect the screen size to be up to 40 inches, just like how it is offered in the 2024 Toyota Tacoma. But behind the scene, it will use the exact same software that all new Lexus and all new Toyota models are using currently which is the updated version of the software designed by Toyota Connected in the US. Uh, what about all the buttons and switches? Well, I think following the Tacoma design, they won't eliminate switches for things like a temperature and also for audio controls. So those should be kept 
thankfully, because I don't want all those buttons to disappear and move into the infotainment system like some brands are doing. But that would be tragic for 400 owners who likes to go off-roading and who likes to use the vehicle for practical things. And if you can't actually adjust these things by hand and have to go into infotainment system, that would be truly annoying and just would not go with the design theme of what the 400 stand for. I think the overall look and feel will be more aggressive than the Tacoma because once again, I think Toyota will try to position the 400 to go against the Ford Bronco and Jeep Wrangler with more of aggressive design. And does that mean that Toyota could introduce removable roof or panels or even removable doors, much like what we see in the Bronco or Wrangler? I just don't think that they will go that far simply because doing that requires substantial engineering changes and I don't know that Toyota would spend that much time in re-engineering the 4Runner to be able to do that. Uh, but I could be wrong. Who knows? Maybe the 4Runner will be a true competitor to the Bronco and Wrangler and many of the panels and even the doors might be removable. Well, let's hope that that is the case because I would love to see a 4Runner with a removable panels, especially on the roof area. I don't really care about the doors or being able to fold down the front windshield because most people don't do that even with a Wrangler or Bronco. But if we can remove part of the sections of the actual roof and then kind of make it into convertible and maybe even have a soft uh, convertible top that can close the roof, well, that will be truly amazing. And that will be a very different um, design from the Land Cruiser. And therefore, it will make sense in terms of how the new foreigner might be positioned. Uh, but from an engineering perspective, it takes a lot to do that. And therefore, my feeling is that they will not do a removable roof with a convertible top. But once again, we'll have to wait and see. Otherwise, the interior should be roomier, more practical in the sense that the vehicle might gain a bit of a length and width, as it is the case with many Toyota products. But they have to also make sure that they don't grow so big that it's too close to the Land Cruiser. So perhaps an inch or two here and there, especially in terms of width, uh, is expected for the new 4Runner. But hopefully the interior will be roomier with a better engineering and better design. Although with a hybrid, maybe the battery pack could occupy some of the space in the back and that could take up second row of space or, or even the rear cargo area as it has done with the Sequoia. I'm hoping that that isn't the case because with Sequoia, there's so much compromise in terms of cargo space due to the battery positioning. Uh, otherwise, you can expect all of the newest features and technical stuff in the 4Runner as you are seeing already in the new Tacoma, which means latest safety equipment, uh, which is Toyota Safety Sense 3.0, as well as some of the required tech like a wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, uh, along with hopefully improved stereo system, improved design uh, for cup holders and center console, and all that good stuff, which will bring the 4Runner finally to a proper updated design because it really needed this new design due to the fact that the current 4Runner has been around for so many years. I do admit that I still really like the current gen 4Runner as you know, I own seven different versions of the 4Runner over the years from 2016 onward. And therefore, I've owned almost every variations of the 4Runner. Um, so I know the 4Runner very well. And therefore, for me, it's going to be really important that the next gen is done right. And that it doesn't sacrifice or compromise too much of what the 4Runner stands for. And that the DNA of the 4Runner stays strong and stays consistent when the new model comes up. I'm really curious as to what you guys are hearing or what you guys might know or what you are speculating about the next gen 4Runner. Let me know in the comments below because I would love to discuss this with you and try to figure out together what the next gen 4Runner could be. Anyhow, I hope this was helpful and exciting for you guys. Let me know in the comments below what else you want to know. Also, give me a thumbs up if you like my video. And if you haven't done so yet, would you kindly subscribe as well. But until next speculation or until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.